What is going on guys? So over the weekend there was a sign up beta for a little game called 9 to 5. Now personally before, you know, this weekend I hadn't actually really heard of this game. How I found out about it was I actually got a Facebook ad of all things. So I decided to, to check it out. As you know, I do like my old FPSs. And uh, let me just read the description that kind of got me intrigued. 9 to 5 is an upcoming free to play 3v3v3. Tree tree tree. Yes, lots of trees for me to say wrong. Team tactical first person shooter. So you know, I see that and I'm like, okay interesting concept it's set in the future where corporations rule and being a mercenary for them is just another job collaboration and smart team play is what gets the job done around here not just pure reflexes so i'm like okay you know i love my tactical shooters and it emphasizes team play and you know kind of smart planning as such so i played about four hours of this i got um two other guys from the 82nd to come with me i mean pretty much did a stream over on twitch so you know if you do have any questions about the game either comment down below or do drop into the old twitch link in the description but um yeah starting off i guess the most important thing for any shooter is what are the weapons like so overall you know there was a bit of good weapon variety and i'm gonna have you know in the background just some uh things of me looking through the menu and you'll see kind of the variety of weapons i was able to unlock them all there is like a little store but um, I assume the price is there because you kind of earn credits for playing, you know, matches. And then you use those credits to buy th guns and, you know, different kind of uh, armor sets in the store. They were pretty low. I'm assuming that's going to be upped. But, um, you know, as of playing this beta, you were pretty much able to buy a new thing every kind of round. So I have everything unlocked. So it's just going to go down through them in the background while I kind of talk here. So the weapon variety was pretty nice. But the stats kind of don't really make sense, you know? First off, there was no damage stats, and uh, I'm pretty sure we all like to know our damage stats. Uh, secondly, there was like reload speed of like 40% and whatnot. I'm like, what's 40% in reload speed? So I think, yeah, some of the stats are a bit vague. Um, there was like a little machine pistol, not a machine pistol, but like a three burst pistol. Didn't know that by looking at the menu. Um, so yeah, some of the kind of stats i feel for the weapons don't really make sense but overall you know there was a nice variety i kind of felt found myself switching between not just to try them out but um to kind of get a real kind of feel of you know the different diversity and i felt like you know no guns kind of really overlapped it's only only one shotgun in the game as of current but uh yeah overall you know the gunplay that's what i'm pretty sure they were meant to be testing that for this beta you know gunplay felt good although kind of saying that I felt like, you know, people were kind of bullet sponges and that kind of where armor comes into it. So, you know, you have different armor sets, you know, you have different characters that have a bit of availability to different types of gadgets. And I'm assuming this is kind of what they mean when they talk about, you know, the corporations as such. So, because the way how they work it is the more armor you have, the less utility you have. So, you know, if you want to take more armor, you get less utility. You want more utility, you have to fortunately have less armor. Although I did feel like armor was a little bit too strong. So my favorite kind of guy was the old Trapper. So, you know, he had a variety of like smoke grenades, uh, scanner flashbang. So I kind of identified where they were, which I kind of, a little OP. He had an EMP grenade and a gas grenade. Then as, you know, so you know, as the medium armor, I was able to take one kind of secondary gadget. So I had a choice between, you know, laser trip mines, which were, you know, surprisingly how obvious they are to see. People didn't really notice them. I had so many people run into it. And I also had a spring trap, which I didn't really use. Those mines were, were too good. So then you also have the Merlin class, which is kind of more of your heavy kind of duty kind of team player guy. You know, he has the likes of an ammo box and a med kit. Uh, he also has got frags and uh, fire grenades, essentially. And then um, if you pick the really light one, he has something that's also shared with our last guy of the Union Foundry. Got like little kind of stim things, and I guess they're kind of more of the... I guess self-sufficient med focused kind of guys is the easiest way to describe it so yeah once you've you know chosen your weapon and you've chosen your armor set then you kind of got to look at you know what kind of uh what kind of auto support system you want so you get a few different kind of choices um personally i kind of like the ones that were like you know explosion resistance or fall resistance because you know there's a lot of kind of mobility and going from especially in the old new york map there's a lot of kind of vertical play and kind of, I guess, kind of parkouring, to be honest. So yeah, they're kind of cool. You get to kind of choose one or two, kind of depending on, again, which kind of loadout you choose. And last but not least, you have your drone ability. And uh, you get your choice between a motion sensor or a hacker. And personally, motion sensors are pretty goddamn OP. Because this is kind of where my first kind of problem 
where the game as such comes from. So we made a kind of list of kind of, I guess, pros and cons of, you know, what we liked and what we didn't like. So I guess the first kind of negative thing is armor felt a little too strong. You know, you just have your guy with the heaviest armor and then he just mow you down in a you know, 1v1 gunfight. You really kind of had to, you know, either double team him or uh, play a little smarter about it. So yeah, the drones as such, like, you could fly them out and you could set them up and then you get a little picture in picture what the drone can see and i felt that was you know okay fair enough that's that's pretty strong you know they're easy to shoot you just one shot the drone you know fair enough i felt like yeah the picture in picture maybe shouldn't be a thing it feels really strong especially when you're working with a team you know you just set three of your drones up to cover all other angles that you maybe can't cover or even just to pre-peak people um also after you die you can use your drone which again that's really goddamn strong um you just pretty much use that to just spam ping the enemy so uh you know, it kind of, as you know, they say it's meant to be tactical, but I feel like you're really taking a lot of tacticalness out of it when you're just immediately identifying where people are and you don't really kind of have to, you know, take it slow and figure out where they are, or, you know, actually move any sort of tacticalness. You just bum rush everybody and it works. Also, one feature that I forgot to mention that we actually really liked was the fortifications. So you could actually, you know, board up doorways or board up windows to kind of, you know, funnel in the enemies and again i guess this is where the drones become op as well but um yeah overall the fortifications was pretty nice when you're kind of just defending you know kind of want to don't have people just sneaking their way in you have to actually get through the the barricades that you set up so yeah fortifications really nice feature secondly sentry guns either they shouldn't be a thing in the game or just remove them as it so in the last phase you get to whoever wins the second phase starts defending a point and they like if it's the extraction they get two sentry turrets that's just that's just ridiculous like we're, we're playing a shooter here the, adding these sentry turrets is just just annoying really um so i don't know maybe they, they need to be looked in i feel like they're kind of just an annoying addition i kind of maybe shouldn't even be there and speaking of annoying additions that really shouldn't be there so there's two mechanics in the game. There's a down but not out, and then there's a bleed mechanic. But if you bleed, you don't go into down but not out. You just die. But down but not out surely is taking more damage than bleed. So you have this weird thing where, you know, you're bleeding, and if you try to heal yourself, you're pretty much dead because they're just going to rush you because it's so fast. And if you don't heal, yeah, you're going to die. So, and yeah, you die. You don't go down. But yeah, I, 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 just don't, I don't, don't understand the whole adding bleed and down but not out. Choose one or the other. Don't include both. They're it's an annoying mechanic to have bleed and down one out is kind of annoying as you know attacking people when they go down one out and you, you know you're like they should die so yeah there's just a few kind of balancings with the armor the down one out and the bleed system you know that's kind of the, the main annoyance that we kind of found with the game other than that you know we really enjoyed it you know the map variety there was two maps there's varmstadt food lab which was kind of your typical more kind of smaller i guess similar to kind of call of duty kind of maps you know in the case that you know it wasn't super mad vertical there was you know a kind of three-story bill in the middle as such that kind of ran through it but other than that you know it was fairly kind of recognizable um and kind of easy to understand then you have the likes of old new york and i swear to god we played the food lab a million times and i played old new york like twice so I, I, like nine times it was the food lab and twice played old new york but I feel like this is this is the kind of really interesting map because there was a lot more vertical, a lot more longer distance kind of engagements as such. Um, and, you know, we had people on top of buildings and whatnot. So, yeah, that was definitely kind of a more interesting one. But I do feel like, you know, the, the combat of this kind of resembled a bit more of a battle royale because of the fact you had the armor and then, you know, the down and out stages. But then it tried to get, you know, more hardcore, more tactical with bleed and the bleed's just not necessary. So, yeah, overall, it was good, but... One kind of also other little thing was like the concept is cool and it makes for dynamic fights with, you know, the three groups of three. But and how it kind of the matches work is there's three phases. So how you if whoever wins one affects the other one and then so on. So, you know, the first one usually for me was, you know, you had to secure this point. And so, yeah, we, we'd go out, we'd do that. And if we won, we'd start defending this next one. And we pretty much had to defend it from the other teams that were coming in. That's pretty cool. And whoever won that one, start for the extraction. And then, yeah, so that's where kind of the sentries came in. It was really annoying. It was like, why is this a thing? Um, and yeah, so then whoever won that kind of, this is where it got really weird. Because it's like, it doesn't feel like anybody won. And it's kind of like, why are we doing this? 
It's like, are we just doing this for the money? It's like, there's no kind of, you know, this team won kind of thing. It's just kind of, you play your rounds and you get multipliers if you win. And there's no kind of like, there's no, it's like, why am I playing this? There's no kind of reward feeling to that, that like, I was better than these two teams. It was just, you know, I won this round, they won that round, I won the last round. I won two out of, you know, the three rounds, but it doesn't really feel like I've won, you know? Because you might win the first two and lose the last one, and then it just feels like you've lost. So, like, maybe even if they had, I don't know, like, just me just absolutely spitballing, but, you know, there's actually only two phases, and say if two separate teams win, then there's a showdown between those two teams, or something that kind of, something that kind of makes it feel like, you know, you were better as such. There's no kind of rewarding feeling to, you know, actually playing through the matches. But yeah, so besides, you know, those few little things, overall, enjoyable experience. Um, I definitely will be checking it out when it does come into full release. If there is another beta, I definitely will be playing it and uh, probably updating my opinion of it. Though I would like to see kind of access to, you know, private kind of servers or lobbies where I can invite kind of some of the, my friends and we can kind of figure it out, and f you know, test some things because I would like to do some testing. It's hard to do testing in public games. But yeah, guys, if you want to see more 9 to 5 content, be sure to uh, hit that like and sub. And let me know down in the description. Anyways, guys, till next time. Be awesome, stay awesome, and as always, have an awesome day.